first of all, just a big welcome to, to all of you. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Joe Fantosi, and I'm the Director of Recruitment and First Year Scholarships at Hunter College. Um, we're super excited that you're interested not only in applying to Hunter, but also um, specifically for our Freshman Scholar Program. So we have a lot of people here today that you're going to hear from um, over the next hour or so that can tell you all about the experience um, in the Freshman Scholar Programs at Hunter, um, all the unique aspects to it, what it's like to be a student, not only in the program, but also at Hunter, some of the challenges behind um, and also um, pluses behind virtual learning. So we're going to be uh, have a really nice discussion today. As you probably already noticed, um, just a couple of logistics before we get started. You are in webinar, uh, webinar mode, excuse me, um, because there's so many of you here. Um, so you can ask your questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Um, we do have staff members in the background that can answer you live, or if we think your question is good for the group, we may actually uh, raise it at the end for everyone to, to hear the response. Um, we'll get to as many as possible. Uh, we'll try and get to all of your questions, but if not, we'll make sure that you have the resources uh, at the end uh, to contact us if you have any other questions. Um, so with that, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I want to talk to you a little bit about or what are the honors programs? Um, what are the honors programs at Hunter College? Um, where do they fit in as far as like the, the larger picture of academic opportunities at Hunter? Um, the next presenter you're going to hear from is our advising office, and they're going to get into some of the nitty gritty, nitty -gritty details. Um, but for now, we're going to start with a little bit of an overview. Um, so the first one in particular, I'm just going to show you a visual really quickly so that you can see this here. So there are six major programs, uh, honors programs at Hunter College, so that you see them all on your screen. Some of them are pretty obvious in the way that they're named and others perhaps not as much. So I wanna quickly go through them. So the first one uh, you have is the Athena program. This is a program that is typically geared towards students who are interested in the humanities, um, the uh, philosophy, also history, sometimes students with also even that are, uh, have uh, some of the social sciences um, like Psychology, certain aspects of psychology are a good fit for the Athena program. The Daedalus program is pretty straightforward. These are students who are interested specifically in computer science. Um, so the Daedalus program um, is for students who are interested in really diving deep in uh, various programming methods, um, also having a lot of field experience. Um, and you'll get to hear a little bit more about that from, from some of our students on the call. Um, the MUSE program is for fine and performing arts. So these are students who are interested in film, uh, in media, dance, theater, music, art, art history. The great thing about MUSE also is that um, often a lot of students in it aren't even necessarily majoring in one of those things. You can, of course, uh, but it is for students who are interested in any of those particular areas. Um, the nursing program, uh, which is on the lower left hand corner of your screen. This is for pretty obvious again leadership in the field of nursing. So these are for students who are interested in becoming a nurse and being in our school of nursing, um, our prestigious school of nursing, which really results in some fantastic um, students getting jobs in New York City in the local hospitals that you're going to hear a lot about today. But the school of nursing is um, one of the most prestigious institutions um, in the country for this particular field. The Roosevelt program, these are for students who are interested in policy, um, so public policy. Um, we have a lot of our pre-law students in this program as well. Um, if you're interested in civic life, any social or political issues uh, that are happening in the world around you, um, this is the program for you. There's a lot of discussion-based coursework that you all can take part in. Um, and in addition to that, there is once we get back to uh, a, a, some semblance of normalcy, there's a lot of uh, trips that you'll be able to go on, visits to Washington, D.C., things of that sort. Um, and last and certainly not least, uh, it's actually our largest program is the YALO program. These are for students who are interested in scientific research and also pre-medicine. Um, so that's pretty self-explanatory students who are majoring in biology or chemistry um, mostly and students who are interested in our pre-med track. So that in a nutshell is sort of um, the six different programs that are offered as part of the honors program. Um, so what are the major benefits? Why do you want to be a part of this, uh, these programs? Well, first and foremost, and, and we'll get this one out of the way, it's the one people always ask about. Yes, there is a merit scholarship uh, portion for this. 
Um, it is four year, for four years of study. The amount does vary um, year to year based on academic performance and for that particular cohort, but it is a significant merit scholarship which offer, is offered to cover the cost of your, a, por a portion of your tuition for four years or eight semesters of study. You'll be getting a tailored academic experience, which includes a lot of small seminar classes in your area of interest. Um, you're going to be getting dedicated academic and faculty advisors, some of whom you're about to meet in just a few minutes. Um, you are also going going to get priority registration at a relatively large institution like Hunter that certainly becomes uh, really important. I'm sure our students on the call will, will certainly talk a little bit about that as well. Um, and lastly, this may seem maybe not quite as relevant right now, but you get priority placement into one of our residence halls. Um, so that's really exciting for when we do return to campus. If you're interested in living on, um, on our campus, we have four different residence halls that are all on the east side of Manhattan, relatively close to our main 68th Street campus. You can live, you get priority placement into one of them. We are mostly a commuter school, but we do house a thousand students. Um, so plenty of opportunities to live in one of those, but obviously it can be a little competitive. So getting that uh, that edge, that priority placement is certainly really, um, really important. And uh, you know, lastly, to kind of sum up this experience before we um, start talking with some of your advisors, you're going to be with like-minded and driven individuals. Um, these people are going to push you academically and sometimes even socially to do things and in be engaged. Um, you'll be pushed by your academic advisors, by your faculty members, and also by your peers um, to really sort of be the best um, version of yourself, explore new areas, um, and also really hone your skills into the area that you wish to focus on. That's the theme of your cohort. Um, so just a couple of logistics um, that I want to share with you about the application process. Some of you in this room are uh, in the process of applying. Some of you have already applied. Some of you are thinking about the future, so fall 22 or 23. Um, so this is just some general information. If you haven't done it already, some of you may have gone through these steps already. First and foremost, you complete your admissions application to Hunter College, whether that means you're applying as a general freshman or you're applying to our other honors program, which is the Macaulay Honors College. Um, 48 hours later, you'll have access um, to our freshman scholars application. You could access that simply on hunter.cuny.edu slash scholars. You'll create a scholar application. Um, and then from there, you'll be asked a couple of, I'm reluctant to even call them essay questions. It's more like short answer follow-ups for the individual cohort that you're interested in. And that information will go directly to um, the leaders in each individual area to, to review your application. Um, the deadline, some of you may, uh, that are seniors in high school and that are applying now, you may have noticed the deadline was a couple of days ago. So it was January 15th, but that's okay. It was a priority deadline. So we are going to continue to take applications. Obviously we're hosting this as sort of one of our last, um, last info sessions to make sure that we get all interested students to apply. Um, so we are taking applications um, for the next couple of weeks at least. So be sure to get your application in as soon as possible if you're a senior now and kind of going through the college process. The last thing that I want to address before we transition over to our academic advisors is talking a little bit about how this relates to our Macaulay Honors College, which is the other honors program at Hunter. Um, a lot of you in this room are also interested in Macaulay. So what's the difference? How do you balance the two? Can you be admitted to both? So Macaulay is a university-wide honors program, so it's not just at Hunter. We do have the largest chapter at Hunter. We have about 100 to 120 students each year. Um, and But the freshman cohorts, the ones that we were just talking about that you're here to learn more, are very similar. You're going to get similar benefits in the sense that you're going to get a potential uh, merit scholarship going to get um, an academic track that is challenging for you. Um, from Macaulay, they're going to offer you special seminar classes that you're going to take. So a lot of overlap in the experience. You can apply to both, but you will not be admitted to both. Um, applying to the freshman scholar programs does not hinder your application any way to the Macaulay Honors College. Um, so you can apply to both, but again, um, you will only be admitted to one. Um, once you've applied, if you go the route of applying to the Macaulay Honors College, you'll be considered for that first, uh, for the most part. So the Scholar app will have absolutely no negative uh, impact on your review for the Macaulay Honors College. If you've applied to general admission at Hunter, we'll just uh, pass on your application to the Scholars uh, Committee immediately as soon as you apply to that. So that's a little bit on how that works. And if you guys have more questions about that, I'm happy to, uh, to address that a little bit later. Uh, but for now, what I'd like to do is just simply 
transition over to both of our, we have two academic advisors with us today from the Freshman Scholar Programs, um, Yarlin and Elizabeth. Um, they're both fantastic resources and work directly with some of our scholars. So they're gonna give you a little bit more of an in-depth overview of some of the benefits of being a scholar, how the advising structure and the program each one of the cohorts. So I'm gonna pass it over to them. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you. Welcome. Um, I'm going to uh, get started. My name is Elizabeth Wall O'Brien. I am the academic advisor um, with Scholar Programs. I work with um, a number of the cohorts, most specifically, well, actually all of them, but uh, Yellow, Daedalus, and um, I also work with Athena Scholars. So I wanna tell you a little bit about some of the benefits of being a scholar. We talked you know, briefly about them, but I wanna focus on the advising piece. Um, so in terms of what we do with programming support, we offer individualized advisement, which includes academic planning. We'll talk to you about major selection and um, career exploration. We'll also help you develop a four-year plan. I look forward to meeting with all of my students, to working with them individually. And the other thing that we do is we, as advisors, we work closely with the faculty directors for the cohorts. So um, programming is provided by um, my advisors and in conjunction with the cohort faculty directors as well. So there's a lot of collaboration. Uh, advisors also help scholars to navigate the various transitions, transactions, and decisions that are made throughout the four, course of four years. Um, again, very individualized, very personal. I'm proud to say I know just about all of my students and what they're up to, and that's one of the big bonuses. So let's take a look. Um, benefits of being a scholar. These spectacles on here. Um, this would include things like the Purple Apron Food Pantry. We have emergency funding, COVID-19 relief aid, which, which has been very important during these very trying years. I mean, trying months, I should say. It feels like years, doesn't it? Um, Long-term laptop loan. We have mobile hotspot loans, internet and Wi-Fi. Department of Education, free meal plans for anyone food cards, um, DACA tips for those of you who are um, qualified for that. And we have a wonderful team for that, by the way, and legal Im immigration consultations. So these are some of the benefits that we offer um, to our students. Now let's talk about Athena. Um, are we, um, I am the advisor for the Athena Scholars Program. And I work very closely with Dr. Dan Malik. And um, we do have uh, a represent representative of the Athena program here who will speak with you. Uh, the Athena program is for students who are interested in humanities kinds of to topics, philosophy, classics. Um, and um, Dr. Malik runs a um, seminar for you guys, which is a course for, for all of the Athenas who start in the fall of uh, this year, it'll be 2021, will be taking um, philosophy with him. So the idea is to build a cohort of community of learners. And one of the ways we do that is through our um, specialized classes and our freshman year seminar class, which I teach. We can move on. Daedalus. Those of you who are interested in computer science will get to work with uh, Professor Zemansky. Um, Professor Zemansky is passionate about his work with uh, his Daedalus scholars. He's, um, again, very individualized mentor. He provides some um, uh, Google mentoring every second year Daedalus will work with Google software engineer and have a mentor, which is a really lovely piece of this program. Um, we offer this, uh, this, is, this is unique to our program. You're not gonna get this anywhere else. The other thing is that um, we have partnerships with Yext, uh, Red Balloon Security, 
Cockroach Labs, and many other tech companies. Um, Professor Zemanski is um, very hands-on, minds-on, loves to give his students um, opportunities to learn in real-world settings. So um, here's some job successes. We have students who, who get offers with Google, Amazon, Facebook, Yex, Bank of New York, Salesforce. Uh, and um, students also have received awards um, at Hack New York, which is our biggest hackathon. And um, so he is, uh, he's our go-to person for that. And um, it's a wonderful program. I, um, I'm really excited to work with this. I also work with some of the Daedalus scholars and I can tell you it's a highly motivated group of students who help each other. It's a lovely community. So if you are interested in um, CompSci, that, that would be your go-to place. What's next? Okay. I'll take over for a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'll just be highlighting the, the MUSE cohort, which as we mentioned earlier, is typically the cohort that um, deals a lot with the arts. So if you're interested in arts, you know, whether dancing, um, uh, drawing, acting, this is a really great cohort. I've personally had um, the pleasure of working closely with the cohort director, Dara Mayers Kingsley, and she's amazing. Um, she also is uh, in charge of uh, handling the Mellon Arts Fellowship. Um, and Mellon Public Community, Humanity, sorry, Fellowship, which are really great opportunities and I definitely encourage students to apply to these. Um, it's just an added opportunity to do even more professional development and have um, faculty mentorship. Um, and there's of course other benefits to it as well. And we have listed some of our students who have actually been awarded these fellowships, which is great. Um, the MUSE program, they also uh, have good relationships with a lot of different institutions so that students can do internships, um, as you can see below on the screen, such as, you know, internships in news outlets like CBS News, ABC News, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. We have um, partnership with different art museums, theaters, music industries, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and classic New York arts institutions. Um, so some of our recent spotlights, these are some of our students who are currently uh, either working or doing some type of internship. Uh, we have a student at CBS News. We have someone in the music industry at Atlantic Records. Um, we have another student at the Frick, Isabel Fernandez. And we have someone at The Tonight Show um, with Jimmy Fallon. So I believe we also have some new students on, on the call here too. So you'll get to hear from them as well and hear how exciting it is to be part of this cohort. Um, we have also some alumni that we want to highlight. Uh, so this is after, you know, their time here at Hunter and within the Muse uh, program, they get to move on and do even more exciting things. Uh, there's an associate producer at ABC News, Alana. Um, there's Colleen, director of auctions at Artnet, and Hera, who's a two-time Emmy award-winning segment producer at NBL. Um, students also have the opportunity to do performances. Um, when, you know, before Corona, when we were open, students definitely uh, performed in Hunter College with the productions there at K Theater and students also danced at the New York City uh, Center stage with a professional dance company. And we've also had students who've had the opp opportunity to do study abroad. So these are some of the places that they've gone to, uh, you know, Argentina, Amsam, France, Australia, South Africa. Um, I'm gonna move forward to nursing. Um, so nursing is also a really great program, um, very re reputable uh, and, and competitive, but really great. A lot of our students get great opportunities there, especially um, after they graduate as well. Uh, these are two of our student uh, highlights. We have Mary, who's a nursing scholar, uh, class of 2019. Um, she, one of the things that she highlights herself is that uh, the Nursing Scholar Program has provided her with many opportunities and she's had access to a great number of resources that enhances her career within the, uh, the nursing field. And she's also honored to have worked with some great mentors that have helped develop um, her identity as a professional and helped further shape her values as a person. Um, we also have Anisha, uh, class of also 2019. Uh, she says that the nursing program is one of the most reputable nursing uh, programs in the city and the hospitals and locations that students have access to are invaluable. Uh, moving forward, we have Roosevelt. Um, Roosevelt, uh, I've also had the opportunity to work very closely with the Roosevelt uh, cohort director, Elise um, Jaffe, and she 
is awesome. She like does above and beyond for her students to get all these opportunities and trips available so that students are just um, having these uh, engaging with these different avenues. Um, so one of the things that she does is she does a Lunch with a Leader event series. Um, I believe ever since we've gone remote, she might have done some virtually, but before we were in person, she would do it in the uh, President's Conference Room. And so you'll have uh, once a month or once every two months a uh, lunch series with uh, a leader like Lorraine A. Cortez, um, Mitchell Silver, and um, people like that, just people in the, uh, like senators. Um, she also does a Roosevelt service trips to Mississippi and Detroit. So occasionally you will get to go to trips like that and you will get to go to Albany as well. Um, there, here are some internships that typically Roosevelt scholars tend to pursue, Watson Fellows. We actually have one of our Watson Fellows with us on the call, Dave, so he can definitely tell you um, how amazing this fellowship is. You get three fully paid summer internships and at least one abroad um, opportunity. Uh, we have the Public Policy and Human Rights Program at Roosevelt House. Uh, so Elise does do a lot of um, events uh, that also happen in the Roosevelt House for our students and JFU as well. It's another um, program. Um, and then these are just some special activities um, that Roosevelt's get to par participate in. Um, they do get priority for events at Roosevelt House because it is open to um, other people outside of the Roosevelt program. So you do get priority for those events. Um, like I mentioned, you get the annual Albany uh, Roundtable Seminar um, and you get exclusive um, panels about issues and career paths in various areas. Um, there, there's also a Roosevelt Fortnight Research Dinners um, with the Office of Prestigious Awards and that is run by uh, Dr. Stephen Lassonde, who's also amazing, really great person to connect with and have as a mentor. He, um, he definitely helps you in terms of not only um, writing and how to do you know, your essay writing and when you're applying to a lot of these prestigious awards, but also he mentors you when it comes down to the interviews and what kind of things uh, these uh, awards are looking for so that you can get selected and kind of groom you. And these are just some awards that some of our Roosevelt scholars have earned. We have the Truman, uh, Safia, uh, Gab Gabriella is a Marshall Scholar, um, Nicole is a New York City Urban Fellows, and Darson a Fulbright. These are some of the job placements that Roosevelt's um, tend to have, uh, especially after graduating. So Allison um, is a policy fellow at New York City um, Office of the Comptroller. Um, we have Jessica who's a a data analyst at Siena, and Cassidy, who's an advocate uh, paralegal at the Center for um, Appellate Leg Legislation, sorry. And we're gonna move forward to Yellow now. All right, so those of you who are interested in scientific research or uh, pre-health, uh, this, is, this is the uh, place for you. And pre-health includes things like pre-PT, um, um, physician assistants, veterinary. Most of the students who do come to this, this uh, particular uh, award are on the pre-med track. Some of them are interested in MD, PhD. So there's an array. Um, you guys are lucky. You get to work with Dr. Jeanette Klein who is the faculty director for the Yellow program. I am the academic advisor for the Yellow program. This is a, one of our larger cohorts. Um, and so um, we highlight some of our students here uh, and many of them go to medical school, many go on to research. In this case, we have Feda, who is a Yellow scholar, first generation student majoring in biological science with a minor in Arabic studies and a focus on human rights. Now you see, it's not either or, you can, you can do a little bit of both. She's a McNulty scholar and she works um, at, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to look closer because my eyes aren't so good, um, Long Island at Rockefeller. She uses a, a fruit fly model system to study molecular mechanisms and sleep effects of stress, uh, like social isolation. I have to tell you, I have gone to some of the research presentations of our Yalo scholars. Some of them end up getting published. 
Um, but one of the things that truly impresses me, because I'm a, I'm a lay person, I know some science, but when I watch these students present their research, they are so well informed that they can explain what they're doing in the most professional scientific terminology, but they're also to able to explain it to a lay person. That's how well they know what they're doing. So it's something, you know, if you're interested in research, um, this is a program for you. If you're planning to do a pre-health track, you're going to have to do research anyway. So you might as well enjoy the wonderful training and experiences this program would give to you. Um, our, our, uh, getting back to FEDA, she's also a member of the Yellow Executive Committee, Committee, which is an organization of our Yellow leaders who provide input on the program and provide the student perspective so that we're really able to tailor our programming to meet the needs of students. Not just what we say is needed, but we're also listening to the students and welcoming student feedback. This is one of the things that builds a phenomenal community that we have here. Also, she created the Peer Mentor Mentee Program with Yellow Scholars. So all of our incoming Yellows will be matched to an older student who will provide that one-on-one -on -one mentoring that makes, again, for a strong community. So let's move on. Um, Let's see. Oh, MD, MD Hoke. He, um, he's actually going to medical school. Um, he's um, a, 19, a 2018 Yellow Scholar majoring in biology with a minor in international relationships. He was accepted to the University of Rock, Rochester Early Medical Scholars Medical Program, and um, he's doing podcasts, and we're hoping to work with him because he's trying to give students um, a, a opportunity to to talk about the journey to medical school and so this is something he did for himself and we're hoping to uh, team up with him so that we can um, and now that he's graduating we can extend this uh, this um, wonderful tool to students who are currently attending I'm very proud of him um, Jessica Joni she I, I know her see because I know all my students Ms. Jo Joni is amazing she's always when we were open for this, the Scholar Lounge was open. She's always in the same spot studying in the same place. Um, she's a you know tremendous student, first generation. She's majoring in biological science. Um, she's hoping to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. She volunteers for the Feinstein Institute for Medical Research. She's co-authored an article in the Journal of American College of Cardiology. She's earned um, Oral Presentation Excellence Award at the 2020 Annual Biomedical Research Conference for Minority Students. Um, she's one of our student leaders. We rely on her. Um, she's a fabulous mentor. And again, we're just so proud of our students, so I can't say enough good. Um, is that it? We are? That is it. Mm -hmm. I could talk about this, these programs forever, so. Well, I'm sure yeah, we'll have board. some questions for you um, <laughs> as the program progresses, but we're, we're going to thank you both. That's a lot of great information. Um, and we're going to move now to our um, fairly large and robust student panel. So this is a really exciting part of the of the program because you'll you'll get to hear from from all of our students. I'm going to ask all of our students in the room to turn their cameras on so all of our prospective students in the room can see you. And just give them a moment to come back on. And we do have at least one, if not two representatives from each cohort um, that you just heard from. So this, this portion of the program certainly um, is going to be incredibly insightful um, so that you can hear directly from the source of really what it's like to be, to be in the program. So first and foremost, we're gonna do a very quick um, go around the room, the virtual room, just to do um, uh, some introductions. So if all of you can just say your name, your hometown, what year you're in, major, obviously your cohort, anything else you'd like to add about yourself very quickly to, to introduce yourself. Um, Dave, we'll start with you. Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Dave. Um, I'm a junior at Hunter College right now, uh, double majoring in political science and human rights and minoring in public policy and music. And I am a Roosevelt scholar, as it says in my name. Um, and my hometown is Queens, New York. And I think I think that's it. Great. Thanks. Uh, Angeli? 
Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Anjali. I'm currently a senior in, senior in the honors nursing program. Um, I'm also minoring in psych. Um, I'm also from Queens, specifically Ozone Park. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Great. Excellent. Uh, Colleen. Hi, everybody. My name is Colleen. I am a freshman in the Roosevelt Scholars Program. I'm from a really small town in upstate New York called Binghamton, and I am triple majoring in history, sociology, and classical studies. Perfect. Uh, Laura. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura. I am from Belo Horizonte, Brazil, and I moved to New York in 2016. And at Hunter, I'm a junior slash senior because I'm in the Accelerator BAME program in Biological Sciences with concentration in biotechnology. So this is my last year as a BA student and then next semester, actually fall 2021, I'll be moving on to my master's. And I am also a Thomas Hunter honors major and a dance minor. And as you can see on my name, I'm a yellow scholar in pre-med. Perfect. Um, Ishak. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ishak. I'm a fourth year Athena Scholar student, um, and I'm also the co-chair of the Athena Scholars Advisory Committee. I'm majoring in psychology and minoring in English, and I'm also a McNair, um, Robert E. McNair honors student. Um, and I'm hoping to be applying to PhD um, schools this year. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking to everyone. Great. Um, Jermatis? Hi everyone, my name is Dramatis. Um, I'm a sophomore at Hunter and I am my, I'm majoring in nursing with a minor in psychology and I'm part of a nursing honors scholar program. Perfect. Um, Layla? Hi guys, my name is Layla. I'm a current freshman in the DLS program and I'm also a dream.us recipient and I'm majoring in computer science. I'm also from Queens, New York. <laughs> Perfect, excellent. Um, and last but certainly not least, Monica. <laughs> oh. uh, hi, uh, my name is Monica. Uh, I am a second year student here at Hunter. I'm a theater major. I'm from Lindenhurst, New York, uh, which is on Long Island. And I'm a Muse scholar. And I'm also the vice president of the Hunter Theater Club. Fantastic, excellent, all right. So already our students are getting a sense of some of your accomplishments and also areas of interest. Um, so we're gonna bounce around a little bit so that they can hear from each one of you. Um, the first thing, if you just sum up a little bit about what is your favorite thing about being part of your, about part of your cohort, some of the, the, I know we heard some of the basic overall arching, overarching advantages, but in your opinion, you know, what's one of your favorite things about being part of your cohort? Um, uh, Dave, we'll start with you on this one. Sure, yeah. And so um, a Roosevelt Scholar, uh, just being a part of the cohort of Roosevelt Scholars, um, community is, I think, something you're going to hear all of the scholars today talk about, about what it means to be supported um, at a, a camp large student. But I think when I think about um, sort of uh, oh, did I freeze up for a second? You're okay now. Go ahead, Dave. Okay. Keep going. Um, but okay, okay. Um, but when I think about what it means to, to have a support system at Hunter, um, I the first thing I think of is my scholar cohort because um, you take you take classes with your same cohort in the beginning of uh, your your college career, and then you sort of make friends right there, and it's like the easiest connection. And and I and I can't uh, think of uh, yeah, I think the community is my one of my favorite part, and the support um, of the academic advisors is also uh, critical to to uh, Yarlin mentioned that I won the Watson Fellowship my freshman year, which is about a thirty thousand dollar grant to do three internships over three years and I 1000 percent would not have won this this um, award without the support of, of the the Roosevelt Scholars program. Perfect excellent. Um, Monica can you tell us a little bit about Muse? Absolutely. Um, similarly to how Dave just mentioned community same thing goes to Muse. Um, everyone is there to support you um, starting with our uh, director of the program, Professor Dara Myers Kingsley. Uh, she is an interdisciplinary arts educator and administrator uh, who connects you not only with fellow muses and arts professionals, but also with other resources at Hunter. As Elizabeth mentioned, uh, she is there to help you um, with all of your academic questions that you have and to make sure that you uh, graduate 
while doing everything that you want to accomplish here at Hunter. Um, and then, as Dave mentioned, it's your fellow muses that you get to meet, uh, both older and younger muses and the ones that are in the same year as you. I'm currently uh, working on the Winter Club Show production um, with the Theatre Club Speech and Debate, and our entire production team are all muses. Um, and it's me and it's like uh, students in the years above me, which is really great and shows you that you have, uh, you can easily make friends here when you come to Hunter um, because it's sometimes difficult when you're coming right out of high school or you know it's just a new school for you and it is an easy connection. Great, excellent. And, and last person on this question um, before we move on, uh, Layla, can you tell us a little bit about Daedalus and your experience there? I know you're, you're new but that's a good thing. <laughs> Um, so I've met a couple of my Daedalus upperclassmen who have been super helpful. They always offer to help me with my classes and always talk about internships with me. And also another thing is our program director, Michael Zemanski, because he's very knowledgeable about the industry standards. And usually in a lot of CS classes, you kind of just like learn content and some of it you'll be able to apply when you actually like get into a workforce, but like not all the time. So Zemanski always helps us teach, I mean, teaches us those things in class. And because he's so, um, he works so personally with us, I was able to get an internship for the winter at Bloomberg. So having that kind of support around me has been pretty helpful. Great, excellent, thank you. So um, moving on, I'd, I'd love to learn a little bit about your, what has, how has the scholar program enhanced your experience at Hunter? And we have a few students kind of asking questions like this in the chat, which is like, so what's the difference, you know, if I'm just, you know, a general student at Hunter or I'm in one of these cohorts, like what, what types of, of benefits are there? And I know we talked a little bit about the financial benefits, but I think our students are getting at really the experiential benefits. Um, I'd love to, to um, start with, um, with our nursing program in particular, because there's definitely some interesting benefits tied to that. Um, so if we, we can start actually with uh, Jarmatis for this, and then uh, Anjali, feel free to, to tag on to that so um, we can learn more about nursing from you too. Um, yeah, so I feel like one of the benefits of being in a nursing program as a freshman was the direct entry into the program. So um, a lot of people who've tried to apply for Hunter's program has to take a test before getting into the program. And a lot of times um, they only have a couple, well, like I think the amount of seats available are 120, I think, or around 100. And my professor for, gen for chemistry told me that only that 600 people applied to the program. So that's like a really low acceptance rate to the program. And just having that advantage of already being inside having our seat reserved and just doing great good in classes, I feel like it's really a good advantage to have as a nursing program. Great, excellent. Um, Anjali, anything to add to that? For yeah, so definitely the not having to take the test. So you can focus more on whatever classes you're doing your freshman year. And also with your scholars program, you are with them for the entirety of your college career and your nursing career. And something that we do in the nursing cohort is we have events once a month where you get to meet with faculty or other nursing members or a general speaker who's doing great things. And something that I have been benefited from is early exposure to either scholarships or research opportunities or work opportunities. Um, our nursing year, it's a small class, so it's very competitive. Um, so to be able to get those opportunities first um, and to make connections with people early in your career, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, um, it's very beneficial. Um, and you get the same advisor for the entirety of your program. So you have a great support system for the entirety of your program, which I think is great. Um, and one more thing is you, 
always get the leadership roles when you're in the nursing scholarship program. So like I said, things are offered to you first and you're recognized so you can do more things, which is like research, like I mentioned, um, sometimes you're offered to go away for nursing conventions and mid-year programs, which look really great on resumes if that's something you're interested in. Um, and yeah. Great. I want to stick with um, that sort of research, real life experience theme. Um, Laura, um, can you tell us a little bit uh, about your experience in YALO? Because obviously the sciences are, are always, you could do this in any area, but the sciences are always uh, heavily tied to this area. <laughs> Yes, definitely. I would say one of the big benefits, the first one is priority registration, which is just something that yeah, you really need if you're a science major because science classes feel out, like super quick. So having priority registration was very important for me to get the classes that I need to take as a, a biology major and as a pre-med student as well. Um, and also being pre-med, it is a very uh, well, I would say it was a very popular track at Hunter now, and it's just a very, a lot of people trying to apply. So one of the benefits in being in Yellow is that you have Dr. Klein, which is, and since you are in a smaller group, Dr. Klein would be able to give you more, um, you will be able to work, work closely with her throughout your undergrad, so you can really prepare yourself to apply to medical school and get in medical school. And that's a very important part of our uh, program, I would say. We also go to research conferences every year. So we go to two, one in the fall, which is Abrahams, and the other one is in the spring right now, uh, which is the American Medical College Association's uh, conference. And we have a lot of students who go and present their research. Some of them have won prizes. Um, we work very closely with the director of the program, so if you, have interest in presenting your research, they always um, they always take you on for mentoring and they go over your abstract and go over your poster and they help you structure everything and really prepare yourself so you can give the best presentation pro uh, possible that will really benefit you in your career and it will look great in your resume as well. And they yellow pace for everything. So it's pretty much free trips and very great um, opportunities for us. Great, excellent. Um, I have a couple of, of more questions for the group and then uh, the our prospective students are asking fantastic questions too. So I wanna make sure, and they're specifically for all of you. So I definitely wanna make sure that you answer those as well. Um, Ishak, if you wanna talk a little bit about what was it like when you transitioned to Hunter? What were some of the early experiences or really any experiences that the, uh, Athena offered you uh, in your freshman year or, or even beyond? Yeah, so one of the things that was offered was the first year seminar class. And I, I didn't realize how helpful it was for me at the time, but now I realize how helpful it was because there's so many um, things that we did. So for example, one of the assignments we had was to build a resume. And I already had a resume before then, but I like redoing it and submitting it to my um, mentor to look over it was really helpful. And then one of the other things was, um, I was mentioned briefly before, but we have a four year plan that you make in freshman year and the beginning, it was very rudimentary. Like it was very different from what I have right now, but I made a plan for what I expect to do throughout the four years. And I still use it to this day. Like every semester when I'm looking at my new classes, I look at my plan and I figure out what's changed and how I might look forward to what's gonna be happening next year. And it's definitely something that helped me. And it's like these resources and these um, plans, these ideas that the first year seminar helped me um, build into my habit. I really helped make my career through college much more easier, more planned and coherent. Great, fantastic. Um, Colleen, on a, on a similar question for, for Roosevelt, uh, can you talk a little bit about your transition, your first year experience um, and sort of, did it meet your expectations? What were some of the, the good surprises or even some of the, the maybe not so good surprises that you came across? <laughs> Well, I am a freshman this year, and as everybody knows, this year has been unlike any other. So I haven't really had the traditional freshman experience at Hunter, but I think one of the things that really um, enhanced it was being a part of the Roosevelt Scholars Program. Our program is about, um, my Roosevelt Scholars cohort is about 40 students in, in um, incoming freshmen, and we all have a group chat. We, we took a lot of the same classes in the fall, and we have a couple more that we take together in the spring. And so that was really um, how I, I made friends and met people, because I'm sure, you know, it, it, it's difficult to meet people online when everybody's little black boxes. And so that really gave me um, something to 
to relate to people with, um, to, to find common ground with, a way to meet other people and establish that connection. Um, especially, you know, right now it's, it's really hard to meet people and connect with them. So that was really important to me. Um, and I also, even with classes online, I am a resident at the Brookdale dorms. And so having that, um, you know, priority for dorming, um, you know, part of the reason I came to Hunter was because it, it's been my dream to live in New York City. Um, I'm from a small, a small town in upstate New York. And so um, that was also really important to me was the opportunity to dorm. Great, excellent and really important. And hopefully that experience gets a bit better for you and, and everyone else in the coming months. <laughs> and New York can, can live up to what it, what it is known for. <laughs> um, so you know, a couple of questions coming from our students. Um, first off, for actually for Daedalus. Um, so Layla, if you wouldn't mind um, answering this question, you talk a little bit about some of the, the programming language um, that is learned and perhaps you haven't gotten to this yet in the curriculum, but I'm sure you're aware of some of the things that are, that are being taught. Is it multiple things? Are you learning a little bit of everything? Is it super specific, the curriculum? Um, as a freshman mm -hmm. right now, we're mostly reviewing fundamentals in C++. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Daedalus program definitely gives an emphasis on doing more than just what's in class though, like working on projects, applying to internships, talking to industry mentors, like those in Google and such. So, yeah. Great, excellent, yeah. Um, this, this next question is about the specific classes. Some of you alluded to this a little bit and each cohort does this a little bit differently. So the question is, do scholar students take specific classes with their cohort? So the overarching answer to that question, of course, is yes. Um, this person's asking specifically about nursing, but I've actually, this is a good opportunity for us to kind of run through. Um, so if, um, one of our nursing co um, representatives here, um, it doesn't matter which one, if you could talk a little bit about some of the nursing scholar classes, if they're specific to the scholar program or just the general classes that, that you are taking as a nursing scholar or will be taking, um, that would be great. Uh, uh, Anjali, we could start with you. Okay, um, there are not specific honors nursing classes, um, but kind of like what everyone touched upon, um, you're kind of putting classes with these people so for your freshman year, it's really comforting because you're with these people all the time for the most part. So for example, some of the prereqs that you need for nursing, you're ultimately with your cohort. So for me, my English class was just my 20 co-scholars, um, which was really refreshing to just have a small intimate class with just the scholars. And what ended up happening was our professor tailored our English class to nursing and health professions, which is a benefit. You don't have to do other nitpicky things, which may not be of interest to you. Um, other prereqs like chem lab um, is with your cohort. So that kind of saves you the frustration of registering for classes and finding a class in a spot. Um, you kind of just get it with those people. But like I mentioned before, there isn't specific classes for honors. But like I mentioned before, um, you have seminars uh, once a month, roughly, where you have like conferences. Um, something I didn't mention before was each year your cohort is, um, there's like an overlying umbrella theme. So your freshman year is the art and science of nursing. So all of your conferences would be based on that topic, kind of just to foster your nursing career and education as you go along with your nursing path. Great, excellent, thank you. Uh, Dramatis, anything to add to that on the nursing? Oh, um, I agree. So there's no specific like nursing classes, but you do get to go be in the same classes as your cohorts for your prerequisite courses. So like human um, psychology, statistics, English and all those like prerequisite classes you're paired with your cohort and and that's how you can make more connections with your cohort and like foster a friendship and like get help from each other. Great excellent yes community is is 
as, as you all said in the beginning, is a common theme here. And that's that's certainly wonderful, especially in a relatively large institution like Hunter. Um, Ishak, this question is actually directed towards you. Um, I know you talked a little bit about internship opportunities. Um, did you have help with getting internship opportunities or is there help to getting internship opportunities? Yeah, so um, we have a, a monthly a check-in with my advisor, um, Dr. Malik, every now and then. And whenever I speak to him, he always brings up, he asks me about like what I'm planning on doing at the moment. And then he also gives me some information for what I could go towards. And he links me to um, another person who we have at Hunter, who's a very helpful resource, his name is Stephen Lasson. He is really good with scholarships. And this is something that he, um, he comes to the Athena Scholars and has an event where he explains all the scholarships that we have offered. And that was extremely helpful for me. It actually introduced me to the McNair Honor Scholarship. Um, and in general, they can both help. Um, well, Dr. Milik and um, Stephen Lasson help with figuring out opportunities for you based on what you're looking for. Great, excellent. Um, this question is directed towards uh, Laura for, for Yalo. Um, are the labs currently online or in person or a combination? And what has been your personal experience with this so far? <laughs> Well, for me, unfortunately, my lab is closed. So currently all my research projects are on hold. Um, but there's a lot, of, some things that you can do from home. Like a lot of labs will assign students some research articles that you can read, especially if you're a freshman and you're just entering a lab. Usually the first few months before you actually get your hands dirty is actually just reading the research articles and getting familiar with what exactly they are studying in the lab you're about to join. We do have a... Uh, we have developed really close co um, connection with uh, Rockefeller University, so we have this pipeline program. So in this fall, we have a, we had a lot of um, researchers from Rockefeller come and do, make, do a little panel and re recruit a few of our students to join their labs. Unfortunately, they're not physically in lab yet because it's just not possible because of the pandemic and everything. But a lot of them are like slowly being introduced to the world of research by just doing some stuff online, especially reading. Um, unless you work with computational biology, then you can do some work from home. But usually if you're talking about like the like wet lab or clinical stuff, then these things are usually are right now are on hold, unfortunately. But soon enough, they, we hope them, they will open soon. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, this is a good question that came in, and I'm going to have a couple of you weigh in on this, um, because often with a competitive program, like all the cohorts that you're in, or something like the Macaulay Honors College even, there is a certain level of competitiveness amongst peers, um, and that is just a natural thing to happen amongst um, such, you know, high-achieving individuals such as all of yourselves. Um, so, Monica, actually, if you could, you could start with you on this one. Um, you talk a little bit about that and if that is something that exists, um, if it's friendly um, and, and how you navigate that. Um, I think it's a really good question because it talks of the environment uh, within the program and the college as a whole. I'll have to say with the MUSE program, I don't see competitiveness. I see more collaboration with everyone there. I think we're here to build relationships with each other and network. Um, and create projects together, you know, because we have a lot of art students involved with this um, cohort, and some of them aren't necessarily pursuing arts as a career, um, but they are still getting a well-rounded education because of the MUSE program and what it offers. But I'll say that even though I think that we're all like wanting internships and we all want to you know have successful whatever that means uh careers after we graduate i think that we're looking to be there for each other more than anything um and it's also like when you're going into your freshman year uh, or if you're coming from a different school with these programs i think that we're looking to foster relationships with each other more than that um so my answer with that would be, we're looking for collaboration rather than competitiveness. Great, excellent. Would anyone else like to weigh in on their experience with that? I don't know if you've had a similar, feel free to just give a little hand raise if anyone else has anything to add to that question. Uh, Laura, sure, go ahead. Yes, um, that's a great question actually, because 
a lot of people pre-health can be a very competitive and crazy environment but i feel like yellow it has none of that there's like very strong collaboration be between students like i a lot of the things that i learned are from my yellow mentors so you the mentorship between older students and younger students it's just such a big part of our program i believe um so it's just a very supportive community overall and students help each other get opportunities so it, it's a very i would say it's a very healthy and supportive environment and it's not just we don't get sucked in and all that craziness competitive competitiveness of uh, pre-health or anything like that great and anjali i think you also had your hand up if you want to weigh in yeah, I would say being in the cohort takes away from the competitiveness, um, kind of like we mentioned before with the entrance exam into nursing, because you get to bypass that, you don't have that level of competitiveness, which other people might be experiencing. And also you get help from the upperclassmen. So like, for example, we have a mentee mentor program and we always help our underclassmen um, so you get, for, for freshmen, I was able to get textbooks from my upperclassmen friends, um, notes. Um, so it's very fostering and we all care about each other because we realize how difficult and hard this program is. So there's no reason to be competitive. At the end of the day, we all have the same goal. Um, so they all help each other. And I think that's a benefit that you won't really get. I mean, you could probably get it, but it's just nicer to have a small knit family per se from the beginning of your college career. Great, excellent, thank you. And Dave, this question is for you specifically. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, some of the, I'll, I'll paraphrase this question, the sort of the top few things and uh, the top uh, benefits of being a Roosevelt Scholar or experiences that, that you either have participated in or, or know about that others have done? Yeah, for sure. So I think I'm biased in saying that um, uh, one of the crown jewels, I think, of Hunter College is the Roosevelt House. And so the Roosevelt House um, actually is former President FDR's old home in New York City that um, Eleanor Roosevelt actually gifted to Hunter College. And um, it, it's weird taking classes. And it's weird and it's an honor as well to take classes in such a historic, this is the place where the New Deal was written, right? And it's such a historic space to take classes about public policy, about human rights, about some of the most important issues issues that we're facing in New York City and the world uh, um, in this space. And it's also a space where events take place. I think the Dalai Lama, Bill Clinton, Lin-Manuel Miranda, all these like awesome like uh, world leaders and thought leaders have, have come through this space. I personally, I think I took a picture with like the prime minister of Sweden or something like that um, uh, a couple, a couple uh, a years ago in my freshman year at Hunter. Um, and I think the Roosevelt Scholars Program in particular um, curates a really specific experience for you that um, gets you ready for for a lot of different majors and, and interdisciplinary sort of, um, I have a lot of friends that are um, nursing students and uh, that didn't do the nursing program and pre-med students that um, just have an interest in, in social justice and, and social policy um, because it really expands your horizons in that way. And also travel. I've gotten to travel quite a bit through the Roosevelt and the Roosevelt um, House uh, program as well. I got to go to Mississippi um, uh, through the Roosevelt Scholars Program and through the Roosevelt House. I got to go to Hong Kong and to Arizona and work on the southern border for uh, a couple months and I got to go to Ohio and Florida and I've gotten like I know travel sounds weird uh, during the pandemic now but um, the Roosevelt House has also um, garnered me uh, remote internships during the pandemic and so um, they're really good at adjusting to students needs and I think um, without being biased I think the Roosevelt Scholars Program is, is really good at, specifically at meeting students needs depending on the context of the world. Great, fantastic. And I think we're gonna do one more question. This is gonna be for everyone. Um, so you'll have a chance just to, to very quickly, um, very quickly weigh in on this and we'll kind of go around. I'll, I'll call on you individually. Let's talk about what advice do you have for someone going through the college search process right now um, and going through the application process. All of you have done it either just last year or a few years ago. Uh, it's probably a pretty recent memory for most of you. Um, what advice would you give people um, as they're going through it? Of course, there's there's the added element of the pandemic as well. Um, but um, if you if you you know, could do things differently, or if you have a piece of advice that you'd like to impart on our on our folks in the room, what would it be? Um, Layla, we'll start with you. 
Um, so I would say just your priorities, I guess. And personally, for me, it was that college wasn't worth going into debt for. But um, in terms of CS, like majoring in CS in general, in CS, the knowledge you learn in any school will be like pretty much the same because honestly, it's just hard work and networking. And at Hunter, it's just, I found that Mr. Zamansky just helps everyone. So like on a personal level and he's able to connect you to so many people he knows in the industry and his past Daedalus cohorts that have interned at companies like Google and Apple. And I've met upperclassmen that worked at those companies because of that. Great, excellent. Um, Monica? Uh, there's a lot of pressure on you right now and everyone's asking you, uh, what school are you going to? What are you planning to major in? Um, you'll figure it out. Like just know that, that you will figure it out. And I know we were talk talking about the pros of scholar programs tonight, but one of the pros of Hunter College as a whole is that you have so much flexibility to figure that out. Um, and then being part of a scholar program, you don't, you can expand your horizons as Dave mentioned, that even if you're a MU scholar, that doesn't mean that you like can't major in biology, you have time and you'll figure it out and you'll, you'll be okay. Great. I like that last part. You'll be okay. All right. <laughs> um, Laura? Um, for me, when I was making a college decision, I would say cost benefit was really important for me because I am planning on going to medical school and it's really expensive. So I wanted to go to a college that would give me the support I needed to get into a, a, a good medical school, but that wouldn't take all my money. And Hunter is, was honestly the perfect fit for that because it we have a very strong um, and very good pre-health uh, department. And of course, the Yellow, the Yellow Scholars Program just added to that. Um, so, and one other thing that I will say is that in the application process, just trust yourself, believe in yourself. I know that it's, when I was doing my applications, I was very, sometimes got very self-conscious and feel like I wasn't good enough, but you are, so believe in that and shoot your shot, that's it. <laughs> right, um, Isha. So it's actually interesting because I'm applying to schools again this um, semester for, sorry, last semester for PhD. So I, I, it's a much more recent experience for me than I thought it would be. Um, and in this search, I realized how important it is to list down the schools that I actually think I'm going to want to go to if I get accepted. When I applied to colleges, um, I listed down a whole bunch of schools just because like, they had a nice name and like whatever. And then afterwards I realized, wow, I don't even want to go into that school or this school. I really just wanted, like, I ended up going to Hunter because it was one of the schools that I wanted to go to, like, it actually, like, realistically. Um, so that's one of the big things because I don't want to, I don't want you guys to stress yourself out over schools that you don't actually care about. Um, and then Hunter itself has some really good programs. Like, um, it ha I know in general it has a really good psychology, nursing, computer science, um, education program. All those are really well supported at Hunter. Um, so I was looking, so I think one of the things if you're in a college search is to, Look at the schools that have what you want, not just like have a have like a title or a name. Like look at for what how they can help you because this is what you're doing. You're here for your four years, not for the name, but like for your education. Great, excellent, good advice, um, Jermaris. Um, yeah, I would say to do your research on a lot of schools and like for Hunter, it was really affordable for me, and it has a really good nursing program. So I thought that that was a big advantage to go to a good school, get a good education, and then hopefully in four years, um, I'll apply to my master's program to become a nurse practitioner and not be in debt. And yeah, Hunter has a really good nursing program. Like I'm gonna start clinicals this March in St. Barnabas Hospital. And I'm really excited for that. And I feel like the quality education I'm getting at Hunter will be equally as good as another school who has like a nice name brand like a nice title, so. Great, um, Anjali? Um, to build off of the name theme, um, I remember in high school um, when I talked about going to nursing and I said I was going to Hunter Nursing, 
people brought up, well, what about Columbia nursing or Pace nursing? And that's really because there's more money tied into those schools. Um, at the end of the day, um, I work at Columbia right now and I'm a Hunter student. So it doesn't matter that the Columbia students went to Columbia, like, great for them, but it doesn't matter about name. It's really what you make do with your education. Um, obviously I can only speak for nursing. Um, I think every program is really hard, um, but I would say working at Columbia, every time someone asks me what school I go to and I say Hunter, there's always a great response from it. Everyone recognizes Hunter Nursing School or Hunter as a whole. So don't let the fancy name or, oh, the private school life um, falter like your thinking process because it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, um, you can graduate from here with no debt, get a great education and start a job, amazing job right away. Um, and with nursing specifically, you get a lot of um, experience in great places that you might not even realize because you're so focused on this name thing. Um, and just, it's okay if you don't know what you wanna do right now, you have time, you have people to talk to, don't stress yourself out and get a planner. That's my biggest advice, <laughs> get a planner. Good advice, Dave and then Colleen. Yeah, I guess um, to echo what uh, the sentiments of everyone else, I think, um, it's okay to go through multiple existential crises. I did myself when I was applying to college initially, and, and I, I go through that every single day. And, and college is all about figuring it out. And I think um, the best thing to say is, regardless of how, in terms of size, large or small the institution you attend is, um, it's the college, your college experience is really about what you carve out of it. And I truly um, would not have gotten the opportunities that I did without the support of the Roosevelt Scholars Program program, but just Hunter College as, a, as an institution. I've been proud every day to be a CUNY student and every single day to, to have the education that Hunter is affording me because I, I'm, I'm, I'm confident in that I'm going to be a com competitive and, and sort of uh, world, worldly student um, leaving, leaving Hunter. I'm sad about leaving Hunter actually. So I would really, really suggest thinking about what college experience you want to carve and where is the best cam uh, campus or, or canvas to, to, to paint your, your your future that you want to paint. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Dave. Um, and last, uh, lastly, Colleen. <laughs> um, I think Laura mentioned this earlier about really considering the cost benefit um, ratio. It really is your decision. It's not your parents' decision. It's not your friend's decision. It really is what is important to you. And so it's really important to compare your pros and your cons and weigh out what's most important for you. Um, for me, like I mentioned earlier, I've always wanted to live in New York City, so that was really high up on my list. Um, and at the same time, again, as many of the other students mentioned, Hunter was affordable. Um, I'm still going to be able to attend law school and not be in huge debt. Um, and on top of that, getting into the scholars program with all the added perks um, with that, that really just sealed the deal for me. And I, I just felt like Hunter was where I should be. And so, so you'll figure it out. Maybe you don't know right now, but it, it'll become clear to you, I think, as you get acceptances and stuff rolling in. Fantastic. Um, thank you all. And I just want to answer some questions that came in that were admissions related just really quickly. Um, so uh, some of you are asking about the acceptance rate and, and what are the qualifications. Um, the review uh, is really twofold and I'll t um, first and foremost, of course, it's your, it's your grades, your curriculum um, at, in, in high school, what you've done there, um, any grade trends that we're seeing. We're not looking at testing this year, uh, but secondary and a strong secondary to that is going to be the information that you include on your scholar application. Um, so your investment in the cohort program that you're applying for, what you know about it, um, sort of what your goals, and it doesn't have to be super specific, um, but it can, you know, just so we have a little bit of insight as to, you know, why are you applying to be a YALO scholar? Why are you applying to be Athena? Um, that is something that is taken into consideration. As far as acceptance rates, it's a tough question to answer because um, we review students for these programs in a variety of manners. Um, but I, if I had to throw a number to it, I would say closer to around 25% for these individual programs. It does vary cohort to cohort. Um, 
Some of you are asking about sizes of the cohort of the individual cohorts. This is also something that varies year to year. Um, so for instance, how many students are admitted into the nursing honors program? Um, this year, we had one of our biggest cohorts of 30 students. Um, next year, it will likely be around 25. Um, for the Daedalus program, again, um, it's on the small side. There's usually around 35 students in that particular program. Uh, it does vary year to year. Um, so it's sorry to be vague for these, but it, it varies a little bit. You get the idea that they are small programs. They're relatively competitive to get into, but the, at the other side of that, um, everything that you just heard tonight um, enables you to be a part of the um, of the of a nice, small, close knit uh, community. Two, last question, two of you asked about changing the program. Um, if you lose interest or you find interest in another program, you don't reapply. Um, it's a it's a program only for incoming freshmen. However, it I have seen in the past uh, students work out with faculty members if it's early enough on where you're able to switch a cohort. It's not so so common, but it can happen as long as it works for you academically. If you're completely changing gears and you've missed some coursework, it does become a little tricky in the course sequencing. Uh, but the opportunity could potentially be there, and it's something you'd work out with with some of your academic advisors. Okay, so I think that is, we got to almost all of your questions. Um, thank A huge thank you to all of our panelists, our student panelists, also our advisor panelists. You guys were fantastic. A big thank you to all of our prospective students who are in the room. Um, and last but certainly not least, I'm going to share with you just one quick thing um, on here. This is just a screenshot from our website. And just a reminder, some of you asked, hey, how do we keep the conversation going? Uh, this is how. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways on our website. You'll find all the contact information for the general admissions email. In addition to that, um, the link underneath where you see meet us at the end of the URL, um, each of you have an assigned admissions counselor. Um, you're welcome to reach out to them um, and also ask them any questions about the scholar program or about Hunter in general application process, things of that sort. I'm also on there. You'll see me. Um, you'll recognize my photo. Feel free to send me an email as well. Um, uh, and uh, lastly there, chat with Hunter students. So you have an opportunity when you log onto our website to create an account. Um, with one of our chat tools and you could connect with students, um, many of whom like you've met tonight, um, to ask them questions in sort of like a text message type environment uh, about what it's like to be on campus uh, or on the virtual campus right now at Hunter. Um, and also you have an opportunity there to uh, connect with the admissions staff as well in live chat during business hours. So if you have any quick questions, you could shoot us uh, a question there and we'll answer it for you during the day. So with that, um, a reminder just about the application. Those of you that are seniors, if you haven't filled out the scholar application, make sure that you do so. Um, navigate to hunter.cuny.edu slash scholars. Start your application this evening uh, where you could get it in um, and be reviewed sort of in this first wave of review, which the cohort leaders are conducting right now. Um, and if you're all the way at the beginning, you haven't even applied to Hunter yet for admission, make sure that you do that first. The scholar is the second step. So I wish all of you the best of luck. Again, thank you so much to our panel. Uh, we look forward to seeing your applications uh, and we hope to see you on campus in person at some point. On that note, uh, do keep an eye out on our website. Um, obviously, there'll be constant updates between now and the start of the fall semester about what life will look like um, in the world and also at Hunter. Um, so we do hope to see you in person sometime soon in some capacity. Uh, take care and have a great evening, everyone.